Hello everyone, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. In today's video, we are gonna make a tailor buttonhole or keyhole buttonhole. I've heard some of my colleagues that say that they are intimidated by buttonholes. Please let me know in the comment if you know how to make them or if you feel a little bit intimidated by them. The important feature for these buttonholes is the large corner which is great to accommodate the chunk of the button. Oh my gosh, this button is not really good. Let me see, oh, this one neither. Oh well, well, we have to fix it too. If you are making garment from scratch, remember that on men's garment, the buttonholes go to the left, while on women's garment goes to the right. Usually when we do alterations, we add a buttonhole to an existing coat or jacket or anything else. So in that case, we just have to copy what it is. But if you are making a garment from scratch, then you have to consider that the buttons should be placed at the center front. You have to extend the pattern of your garment around one inch from the center front in order to be able to place the buttons at the center. Today we are gonna use a swatch and how do you prepare it? You will need an interfacing and probably you can make it with just one interfacing and sometimes you need to interface both sides. In this case today I'm gonna use just one and I'm just so all around. So you will basically choose the buttons you wanna use and if you have a flat button, then you just have to measure the buttonhole by measuring the button per se. But when you have bigger buttons, like buttons like are very thick or rounded or any different shape, you can use a tape like this one and wrap it up around the button. And then you are going to pin it and that will give you the exact measurement you need for your buttonhole. Then I will just mark that on my material and I'll be prepared to do my buttonholes. In the case you need to add a buttonhole to an existing garment, then what you need to do is to check the other buttons hole and place the new one leaving the same distance and making it the same size and width. For the next step, I'm going to mark my buttonholes, adding two extra lines, one at each side of the center. Today, I'm marking those lines a little bit wider so you can see better how the job is done. But I'd say they should be around three millimeters maximum. Then I'm going to punch a hole right on the corner like that. And right away, I'm going to cut until I've reached the edge. If you don't have a hole puncher, you just need to cut a line until almost the edge and then you just create bifurcate this line a little bit in a kind of V shape. And this is what you expect to do if you don't have the puncher and this is if you have the puncher. Now I'm just trying to draw the circle and in this case it's a little bit weird because I'm choosing a white button hole but if you do it in a regular way, then it will look a little bit more stylized. I'm going to my sewing machine and I'm using a very small stitch and I'm gonna sew all around my buttonhole. This will be my edges of my buttonhole. I had the camera on my uh. eyes and I couldn't see and it doesn't look great, but it doesn't matter. I will just fix it, that's it. I'm using different colors so you can see step by step, but I will show you after how the buttonhole will look using just one color. My next step is very simple. I will just overcast all the edges. When I start sewing, I try not to make any knots. You are not looking for that. You don't have too much space for knots in here. So I will just insert my needle and I will go all around making my overcast. I will try, of course, to try to guide myself with the first line I created. Well, it's now kind of looking good. And if you want, 
your buttonhole corded, then this is the time to get a nice thick thread that you are gonna use for the cord. And of course, with the thick thread, we need a thick hole needle. You are going to thread your cord. In this case, it's not thick enough to use it just once, so I'm gonna use it double. And I'm just going to pass this needle through the overcast that I just did. Remember that it's good to work in one color only. <laughs> I'm just doing this way so you can see each step separate. I can assure you that making buttonholes by hand, it's a great skill to have in your repertoire. I'm gonna secure my cord, tighten it to a pin. That way I can work and I won't have any problem with it. And this is what I have until now. The next step is to choose the right thread for your buttonhole. Everybody says that cotton thread is the best. Some of my colleagues prefer the glazed cotton because it's thicker and richer. I personally like a lot the silk thread, but today we are going to use polyester thread. Yes, the worst one. And it's because very often we have to do it in this thread because when you are doing an extra buttonhole, the color is more important than the thread you choose. So I'm gonna start, as I told you before, I don't wanna make any knots in here, just a little stitch. And then I'm gonna go to my other side, just through the slot. And then I'm gonna start my stitches. As you can see, I place the thread counterclockwise and then I insert the needle and then pull the stitch. And that way I will form my first pearl at the end of that stitch. And then I will keep doing this motion for every stitch. And I know I sometimes I make it a little bit exaggerated, like if I were a child. Let me show you a good professional doing this one. This is my colleague and he does most of our buttonholes because he's so good at that. So look at that, you see? He stitch first and then he take the thread and pass it over. In my case, I learned this stitch when I was a child and I couldn't kind of get it. And that's why the only way I could grasp it. And now I'm a screw with that movement. I don't even know how he can do it so fast neither. To him, it takes around, Charlie, around 10 minutes it takes to do for you the buttonholes? Yeah, around that. Yeah. Depends on material, it's a two. Yeah. To fold the, the, the thread. So guys, this is not my favorite thing to do. I'm a slow at it, but my colleague is gifted at it. When you finish the whole buttonhole, then you are going to do like two long stitches from edge to edge, and then this thread is time to cut it. You can just cut it, and if you feel like it, you can do as well a knot that it will be covered. And then you are gonna do new stitches in a vertical way to complete your job. My customer loved when we do this job for them. It takes experience to learn, but it's super satisfying. How many buttonholes do you think that we have to do before learning how to do it like you? Too many. <laughs> so I, I did the buttonhole for the people trained me to do that. Yeah, exactly. Different. Uh, uh, Buttonhole, not the same. Yeah, let me let me take it, show this. You see, so beautiful. When I finish, I just pass the thread to the other side, and it's done. When you finish, it's very important to you know accommodate well the fibers, the knots, everything, so it looks good. And this is the buttonhole, and I just want to show you how the same process will look in other materials. So in this case, for example, I'm using 
a 100% cotton and I'm working just everything in the same color then I'm gonna do another one using silk thread so you can see the difference and the last one probably my favorite I'm using the glazed cotton thread and here you go you see I think probably yeah the glaze probably will look better but all of them look good and the customers always will be very satisfied this is the one i add to the garment and this is the one my colleague did for this customer which is very very good and guys that was all for today if you find this video useful please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe share comment bye